Folks, the Leprechaun series is a horror series, which means that it's only natural that it's now taking place in space. Horror franchises in space go together like killers and masks. It's a very good thing that the Leprechaun is now in space, because not only can he not hear anyone scream, but also he didn't hear me mistakenly point out the wrong extras being Warwick Davis and Leprechaun 3. Speaking of Leprechaun 3, the great Brian Trenchard Smith, the director of Part 3, returned to direct this sequel one year later in 1997. The film was written by Dennis Pratt, who had written some action movies like Jackals and Kickboxer 3, and he's an actor too, whose IMDb profile looks like an 80s action movie villain itself. So happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone, which is coming up this week, March 17th. March 17th also being the day in 1958 when the U.S. launched the first solar-powered satellite, the first to achieve long-term orbit, which is obviously the reason Leprechaun in Space exists. I've spent so many years calling the movie Leprechaun in Space, it just dawned on me it's called Leprechaun 4 in Space. Just call it Leprechaun in Space. No one's gonna be like, oh wait, I haven't seen the other three first. Personally, I've got a good feeling about a movie that opens with a PS1 asteroid and a character named Dr. Mittenhand. Let's see where this space opera goes. This had better not be like aliens. Whoa, wait, Miguel Nunez Jr. is in this? Take that, Jason Voorhees. Demon made it to space way before you did. Not only that, but the current home improvement binge watch is crossing over into other shows. Look, that's Debbie Dunning. She was Heidi the Tool Time Girl. And I don't know who this is, but let's just call him Colonel Chop Top and get a Texas Chainsaw 2 reference in here. These soldiers are orbiting the planet Ithacon with a mission of search and destroy and money. In the past six months, he has disrupted the galactic mining operation to a tune of a half a billion dollars. Yeah. Go back to the serious Leprechaun movies, like when Sandy Baron had a pot of gold in his stomach. Wait, before they leave, they need to take Dr. Tina will clearly be the survivor of the movie. Just who are they taking orders from? You'll regret asking. Get your lazy butt online. We need to speak to the boss. What is it? Great. Even in the year 2096, we're still doing lame Dr. Evil impressions. But at least now I know it's nothing like Aliens. It's really like Bruno Mattei's Terminator 2 crossed with a porn. Oh, happy fun. Settle down, Leprechaun. Episode 4, A New Grope. I am ready for this action. <laughs> but of course, the Leprechaun has to be introduced with a MEANWHILE! He's in a tuxedo because this is the most sophisticated Leprechaun entry. No clue why he's in space. He just is, because I've firmly accepted that it's a different Leprechaun in every movie. Unless there's a whole movie just missing in between each entry. This is Princess Zarina, who the Leprechaun must marry to become king, and this is silly. Get back to the soldiers. Yes, they are coming in hot with Saturday morning TV energy. Listen to this lore. And it is your royal blood, madame, that will make me a king. You? A king? <laughs> Ma'am, could you please take this material seriously? I feel like I should apologize to the low budget of Starship Troopers 2 and 3. I'm sure it'll make up for it with jokes. I've seen worse. You ever been to Detroit? It's the only joke he knows. We blame the metal plate in his head. Anyway, the Leprechaun vows to make the princess even more rich than she is. Excellent, she can put those in her fish tank. The Leprechaun movies are all free to watch now on Peacock TV, which is where I'm watching it, so long as you can sit through some commercials that ask, would you rather hang out with a space leprechaun or a bunch of bees? Space leprechaun, of course. Even if this storm means they're shooting a Mortal Kombat movie around here somewhere. I can't believe the princess is considering this. There's gold, yes, but think of the gum disease when you kiss him. And his other space friends. <laughs> no, 
oh, he was planning on using that for a children's puppet show later. Something very weird is going on in this place. Someone covered the entire cave with tinfoil. This is just a ripoff of that Indiana Jones movie where they searched for the Holy Grail on a distant planet and then got radiation poisoning. Don't worry, the movie also references things too. See? Obvious Star Odyssey reference. Never thought I would see the Leprechaun in an intergalactic gunfight. Sometimes you can just tell when a writer's favorite Bond movie is Moonraker. Ooh, this space cat and mouse game is on! <laughs> Damn, that was quick. They ran out of material fast! Okay, so Jason X hasn't been made yet, so will this go by Jason Goes to Hell rules and someone will eat his heart? <laughs> oh, shit! Nope, he comes back via traveling up a man's dick through urine. That's way better. Honestly, I don't know if they're any safer with the urinal tract infection leprechaun or with the mercenaries. Strip. Okay, while she's preparing a space lawsuit, we've finally perfected Honey, I Shrunk the Kids technology. Excellent, that'll look perfect with the movie's game adaptation on the PC. This, by the way, is the famous Dr. Mittenhand, who is definitely not a cyborg. No one eats this ship unless I so say. Is that clear, Sergeant? Also, he's a cartoon Nazi from World War II for some reason. If you love this Leprechaun movie, Peacock TV wants you to know there's way more where that came from. Have yourself a Leprechaun-a-thon! But you'd better also include the kids' movie version, which also starred Warwick Davis. And this is as good a time as any to take our own break, which includes far more Lloyd. And now it's time for Lloyd's Out of Context 911 Lone Star Clip of the Week, the Winter Finale Edition! 911, what's your emergency? I'm lost in a parking garage. I can't find my car. Yeah, this week was a little lacking in the clips department. I'll try again later. Meanwhile, in the 1970s, oh wait, it's still a Saturday morning TV show, no one remembers just how many Saved by the Bell ripoffs there really were. This one was super short-lived because of all the drinking and banging, of course. I spoke with the medic, he said everything is just fine. As long as you use your protective glove when you pee. <laughs> um, excuse me, Heidi knows all about safety. She's put out Tim Taylor being on fire like 12 times. Anyway, boys, here's to my grandma, whose kitchen cabinet we got these glasses from. And who would hate all of the sex and naughtiness in this movie. Kowalski can't have sex because he's in a severe amount of pain due to the gonorrhea that the leprechaun gave him. That's not a dick at all. Let that be a lesson to you, lad. Always wear a prophylactic. I don't want to know what the joke would have been if he came out his ass. Unfortunately, this leprechaun isn't very threatening. He only knows one impression. Ah, hold it right there, pilgrim. It's 2096! I don't know that reference! Again, though, Kowalski's exploded dick may be a better catch than our hero named Books. So you're a doctor, right? A uh, doctor of biology. Well, that must mean that you're pretty smart then, right? Smart chicks on this planet? Doubtful. In case that line doesn't work, just say something else and end it with a big serial killer smile. I am not defensive, and I will shoot anyone who says I'm defensive. Yeah, I got this. I'm giving the old Frank Stallone charm. It gets him every time. The leprechaun could use some of these moves. <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter if we're here or on the dance floor, because... Hey, 21st century, they still can't dance. The jokes are going to be subpar. I see they're preparing to ship the princess back to Earth. She's needed on set of Baywatch as soon as possible. She's in good hands here with Dr. Touchy, as in everyone in this movie is programmed to search, destroy, and date rape. Dr. Mittenhand is very disappointed. He expected more class from Gary from Bachelor Party. 
The others, meanwhile, are busy fighting because someone said to Heidi, you know, Lisa could probably defeat a leprechaun. I do have to apologize, though, for making fun of the dancing, because the Peacock TV commercials have far worse dancing. And the commercials are again crossing into the movie. They're preparing to fight the bees with Jake from State Farm. 90s future movies were very serious about their laser tag competitions. And where did he find that suit, and why does he need it? I don't know what this room is, but it seems specifically designed to give the troops a series of unnecessary pranks. I'm convinced he just wants the princess, because Leprechaun 4 is also Super Mario Galaxy. Hell, I wish this were laser tag. They'd be far better shots. They deserve to be screamed at. You give me the doctor now, before I jerk out your teeth and shit down your throat! Okay, thanks, Artily Ermy. They are all in so much trouble. Dr. Mittenhand is not only on board the ship, just randomly hanging out behind the wall, but he used to be the ship's captain, Christopher Pike, in the Leprechaun pilot. Only this is working with an even smaller budget. Is that this? Is that this? Whoa, careful there, you'll rip the fake chest. The mercenaries are now regretting taking a job from They Saved Hitler's Brain. His stomach makes that sound whenever he's hungry. So Dr. Mittenhand sent them to this planet because he needs the princess's blood to regenerate his own body. It would make sense if you've ever been to space. Everything is getting explained. For instance, now I know what to masturbate with if we finally get another sex scene. Just listen to this hot monologuing. And conjures up pictures of me gold being carted off to pay for feminine pleasures. Did this start out as a leprechaun movie, or did someone just add the leprechaun to their Andromeda fan fiction? I think they got a good chance for taking down the leprechaun. Dead ass though. They are making good scientific advances. They've learned how to make a new finger and really awkward dialogue, like when she wants to know if it's her fault that Kowalski died via leprechaun dick. Well, I mean, I'm the one that gave him the bone at all. Now, now, don't laugh. Let's see where this dialogue goes. Forget about it. Kowalski would have wanted it that way. See, Kowalski would have wanted to die by a leprechaun exploding out his dick. These two, however, clearly want to die by killer sexual tension. Damn, not even going into space could save Jackie DiNardo from Space Dennis Reynolds. Thank God they're interrupted by the leprechaun who magically handcuffs him. Which will forever make us ask, why doesn't he just do that again? And it's about time someone used being a bad shot to their advantage. <laughs> Damn, how's he gonna get past that? No, you're gonna miss his hilarious one-liners. But I'll roast you yet. This barbecue's only just begun. They're already gone, bro. They're sexual tensioning again. You're really good with that rifle. Maybe I could, um, teach you how to use it sometime. If you're talking about your dick, it's not gonna explode, is it? No one on this ship is safe, especially because the leprechaun has now found props. Let's talk about safety in the workplace. Oh, now they're just stealing whole lines from Home Improvement. Who doesn't remember the classic episode when Tim severed his own finger? One guy tries working out a deal with the leprechaun. The character's name is Danny, and the leprechaun is behind some pipes. I wonder where these jokes will lead. <laughs> Crushed by a future AC unit, obviously. But smile! It's the last of the Peacock TV commercials. Now we're just stuck with the movie. Personally, I wish Guy Siner wore this exact same costume when he played Mandel, the Viking press publisher on Seinfeld. I really like Debbie Dunning in this movie. Her character is the most competent one here and the most badass. Please tell me it's over and he was defeated by Heidi. Boo! Justice for Debbie Dunning! Wow, even the green screen wanted nothing to do with Heidi's death. 
She's the only one they actually seem sad about, thus proving my point that the best character in the movie is now dead, and right before they perfected their recipe of crunch berries pancake syrup. It's ready. Finally! And now, Fruity Pebbles Creamer. The leprechaun uses their horniness to his advantage. He knows how to trick these jackasses. Thank you. You saved my life. Huh, my virtual reality sex machine is on the fritz again. Ooh, -hoo, Dr. Mittenhand and the leprechaun finally meet face to face. This scene was the coffee scene from Heat of 1997. Just perfectly written and shot all around with no familiar dialogue. <laughs> Charming. Now the movie's realism is gone. Uh, he's been blown up several times in this movie, but I'm sure this will work. He's killing all the crew of the USS Sex Offender. <laughs> Thank God, the movie's realism is back. He can now finally be alone with his fiance. <laughs> Par for the course with most relationships in this movie. However, they make a good couple other than that. She's in on his evil plan. They have a quest for power and gold and bringing out the gimp to bang Dr. Mittenhand. I'm intrigued about where this is going. They blend tarantulas into this magic space blood and inject him with it. I bet it's gonna give him an aneurysm or something. Let's leave so we can at least get him some ibuprofen for when that headache kicks in. Lady, are you all right? Kneel before me, swine. I am the future queen of Dominia. Oh, never mind. We're interrupted by porno Loki. I seriously don't know how the leprechaun can be defeated. He just regenerates all the time and can even make explosives randomly appear on people. Isn't there anyone here who knows the lore of these characters? On the planet Dominia, when a woman of royal blood shows you her breasts, it's a death sentence. Oh, everyone on Wikipedia knows that. You guys sort this out for a while. Since the Peacock TV commercials are done, we gotta make our own again. And now it's time for a bonus 911 Lone Star clip of the week. Map's right here. All right, I got it all up in my. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> there! That's more like it! Sure, there may be a killer leprechaun on the ship, but that's not going to get in the way of the Saturday night show over at the club. Uh-oh, Miguel was told there would only be one Juana man on this ship. I don't care if he can sing. We're standing on the corner of 31st and Main. If he wins this contest, he gets a free vodka cranberry. Jason X had the virtual 80s. This one has the virtual Priscilla Queen of the Desert. By the way, Dr. Mittenhand is having the worst kind of aneurysm. The one that turns you into a spider. I can see what they spent all of their makeup budget on, because honestly, it looks kind of awesome. I am now Mitten Spider. Hey, MCU, I dare you to add Mitten Spider to your roster of villains. There's all kinds of twists in this movie. Look what happens when the Sarge dies. He wasn't even human. Cyborg. Damn, what gave it away? With the spider-scorpion hybrid loose, it's like they had an idea for a leprechaun in space and the fly in space, and they decided to go with both. Bravo. Luckily, they know to head to the cargo bay. It's a 90s space action horror film. Everything always leads to a showdown in a cargo bay. And where there's cargo, there's gotta be a ticking auto-destruction clock. The ship knows when to trigger the self-destruction mode. It's just what ships do when they know they're nearing the movie's climax. Everything is paying off. They gave him a taste of laser gonorrhea. This is for Kowalski, you asshole. But it does have weird side effects, like making you look like a low pixel photo blown up to poster size. They'll make up for it with a dick joke. All right. We are long past this movie being a porno. Thank you very much. Poor Tina's getting surprised by all kinds of random villains popping up. There's Mitten Spider, and soon enough an inside-out Sam Neill will show up. 
Everything about this movie is seeming really familiar to me. I think I was in this movie. I should know how it ends. That's right, I remember. The only thing that can defeat Mitten Spider is putting on some oil and stripping down to your panties immediately. You know, if there ever was a Space Freddy Krueger movie, I have no doubt that someone would also turn into a giant human spider. That movie I was also in. Well, the ship has everything else, including a dance club. Might as well have a giant hose of bug spray. Oh, I get it. It's from that classic horror film, The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. And thus the idea for Jason X was born. Though in Jason X, we should probably improve the ejected out the spaceship effects just a little bit. Everything I've seen so far has not convinced me that he wouldn't immediately regenerate back onto the ship. And somehow all of that is more realistic to me than them correctly guessing the destruction password. Shoe asteroids I'm already used to. I've seen Empire. I bet the leprechaun stays dead. Same to you, pal. <laughs> Great. So can I actually play this video game now? The good news is, they don't have to explain how the Leprechaun comes back, because every Leprechaun movie after this is technically a prequel. Look, Leprechaun 4 is the space one, so clearly that already makes it one of the most popular ones. You want to have something leap off the shelves for a group of people having drinks and a bad movie party? Make it a horror sequel in space. It will get watched. But luckily, Brian Trenchard Smith is here to make sure it will be consistently entertaining with his old-school exploitation energy, batshit insane villains and plot points, gruesome makeup effects, and Bruno Mattei-style cheesy action dialogue, he's the perfect person to direct a movie like this. He makes it fun. It really does make a great double feature with Jason X. Both fully embrace their plot lines and settings, and both were deserving of a proper follow-up film after their conclusions. However, the next Leprechaun movie, Leprechaun in the Hood, also guarantees that it will get watched at a bad movie party. That does it for this movie. Next week, we'll be taking a look at the classic film King Kong, which I hear is slightly better than Leprechaun in Space. Oh. <laughs>